Hello. There's nobody on yet, but I'm going to talk to myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I'm excited. Today was my very first day of my very new job, very first job as a registered nurse. And I'm working at uh, the local uh, critical access hospital and I'll be on the floor working as a nurse. Hey, Benji, how are you today? It's good to see you. Uh, I'm back online um, talking about some more mama stuff. Um, I just wanted to mention to everybody uh, who visits me today that I'm doing a free webinar. Hey, cuz, how you doing, Corey, Miss Corey? Thank you. Um, I started my new job today, girl. I know I haven't been on Facebook. I took a sabbatical, which has been, uh, like, I'm having heart palpitations thinking about going back online, but I kind of have to, <laughs> to let everybody know what I'm doing and to get people to show up to this event on Thursday. So, um, that's kind of what I wanted to chat about. I'm really excited about, uh, doing this, my very first webinar, which, uh, hopefully goes smoothly. I'm not uh, a technophile like most people these days, but uh, I did just jump on uh, lead pages and hopefully have it set up right. Um, so my topic this week, kind of, you know, my emails going out and my blog post that just got posted up today and the webinar on Thursday is all about rites of passage into motherhood. So it all revolves around this idea that uh, when a baby's born, it's not just the birth of the baby, but it's the birth of a new mother. And this whole idea of role adaptation, um, which is kind of a big deal, you know, in nursing and postpartum care, uh, even from a medical perspective, you know, you want to do uh, your the best job to facilitate a therapeutic environment so that the new mother can adapt to her role. But our Culture does a pretty crap job of ensuring uh, the infrastructure for that to happen completely. So we have a lot of like frazzled, depressed, uh, and unfulfilled mothers walking around uh, our society, and we don't really put a whole lot of value on that. Now, in contrast, of course, the rest of the world has this pretty good on lockdown and have uh, strong traditions of rites of passage for new mothers and didn't treat the birth as the rite of passage in and of itself. Now, the, a, a woman's birth definitely is part of that passage, but at the same time, you know, it was kind of viewed and it still is in lots and lots of cultures that, uh, that the postpartum period is really the time to insulate the new mother and allow her the space to close her body, close back up her psyche from the openness and expansion that occurs during pregnancy and birth, uh, and then integrate back into society. And so when that point in time happens, uh, it's pretty well supported and ensured that um, the woman can pick up her duties uh, and integrate into her role as a mother in the in the tribe or society, uh, whatever we're talking about. So who's with me? I have two people on. You guys want to say, hey, give me some hearts or something. Let me know that you're there. Uh, I'm really excited to be talking about this. I think that it's a huge missing piece. And um, because we don't have these social institutions, we don't really have these, um, these practices really kind of blessed or sanctioned in our society at all, uh, we as women have a difficult time requesting any sort of honoring practice after we have a baby or after we give birth. So a lot of women don't feel like they can ask for help or ask for their needs to be fulfilled after they have a baby. And my whole blog post today, if you want to go to baremamamedicine.com, the post I wrote was about how I really think, you know, I have these theories and some of them have, you know, a, a really uh, strong school of evidence behind them that there are risks of not providing women rites of passage 
into their new roles as mothers uh, and really, you know, traditions and rituals around the rites of passage into motherhood. And this is like, this is really, some of these things are really measurable. Some of these things, uh, you know, the downstream effects of not honoring uh, becoming a new mother uh, have everything to do with, you know, mental health postpartum depression. I think that rates of child abuse and neglect are really tied into this. I think that rates of childhood obesity and diabetes are real tied into this. Really, I think that it's time for our society to, and I'm, I'm speaking of the U.S. in particular because I really think that we are weak in this area. I think that we kind of suck. Um, no, sorry, dude, you're going away. <laughs> uh, I think that really, like, I don't know, I, our country does not, is one of two countries in the whole world that doesn't have any sort of paid maternity leave. So that really just tells us everything. It's such an indictment on where our values are. So, uh, I think that women have to start just taking this back for themselves. I think that that's it. And uh, in order to create that, we need some real strategies, some real tools, things that aren't overwhelming and that actually fit in with our lives, with our lifestyles. So on Thursday, I'm going to be talking about this. If you want to sign up for the webinar, it you can go to bit.ly slash forward slash birth the mother. So it's bit dot L-Y forward slash birth the mother. And I will be spending about an hour talking about three really profound practices that you can put in place to create your own rites of passage into motherhood. And I should mention, too, that this doesn't just apply to women who are pregnant or who just had a baby. Uh, this process can be done at any point if you, if you are a mother and you feel like you never really got that uh, ritual or that ceremony or that really that recognition by the people around you by your community and your community can take part in this or you can do it on your own it's it's totally up to you um, but there's three things that I really come up with that allow that full integration into motherhood and allow us to fill our cups uh, in order to parent and to be mothers for the years to come. It benefits our children. It certainly benefits us. And really, if you think about, you know, our communities, we're the source. Uh, the mothers are the source. Our children are only as healthy as we are. And we really have to start putting ourselves first and coming from a place of reverence and self-worth if we want to make this big shift. So, um, I don't know who's on with me still, um, but I would love to hear from you if, uh, if this affects you at all. I mean, it really does affect all of us, whether the, whether your parents or not, because we all, I don't speak, um, Russian or whatever language that is. Can't read it. Um, we all come from the mother. We all come from a mother. We were all nurtured into this world for better, or for worse. And I think, you know, especially those of us who, hello, <laughs> um, those of us who come from backgrounds where we weren't maybe necessarily nurtured as well as we could have been, uh, it's really difficult, you know. I mean, I think that it's easy for us to look back and say, yes, I definitely could have benefited from my mother being cared for better or her integrating into her role more fully or her putting more of an emphasis on her self-care so that she could take care of us. I know that I could definitely say that, uh, you know, and my mom Gosh, my mom, I'm almost 30 and my mom's almost 50 and she is only just now uh, really prioritizing her self-care after all of her children are nearly out of the house. So uh, you don't want to wait that long. Um, I mean, I can say as a mother of three, uh, my youngest being five months old, like self-care is a huge priority and it's really like a survival 
thing. It's a matter of survival. And traditionally, self-care for mothers or the, the nourishment of a community's mothers, you can teach... No, I can't. <laughs> uh, language is definitely not my strong suit. I mean, I'm a wordsmith in English, but that's about where the buck stops. <laughs> um, schism, I've seen you before. Uh, or was I you guys? <laughs> you guys are like in and out and... Um, not very talkative today, but that's fine because I'm talking. There's a the heart. <laughs> uh, so Thursday, just want to mention it again if you just hopped on, excuse me. Uh, I'm teaching a free live webinar. You can go to bit.ly forward slash birth the mother, B-I-T dot L-Y slash birth, birth the mother. And it's all about three strategies that I've come up with. They're really profound practices that you can uh, use to create your own rites of passage into motherhood. And I think I, I went off on a tangent and I didn't complete the thought, but this is stuff that you can do at any point in your life. This is stuff that older women can do definitely, you know, out of the house or when they're, when they're dealing with an empty nest and their children are all gone. Um, this is all stuff that we have to reclaim and kind of, uh, I think that it's th th these are things that passage through motherhood into motherhood and off of that bridge of postpartum and pregnancy are also necessary. Uh, in order for us to move on to the next thing, we have to transcend that. We have to really uh, integrate into that role fully before we can uh, attain any sort of other self-actualization and I think that that's the goal and uh, and it comes from a place that's got to be rooted in self-worth and in love for yourself and deep reverence for for motherhood for your sacred role on this planet thanks for joining me I'm gonna sign off if you are interested I'm gonna leave you with one last mention of the webinar on Wednesday Wednesday it's on Thursday the webinar on Thursday. I haven't said what time it is. Um, it's at noon Pacific Standard Time, 3 o'clock Eastern, and you can go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash birth the mother. Hopefully I'll see you there.